Daniel Hudson is coming back to the Washington Nationals. This is a good move for them. It's not a ton of money, a total of $11 million over a span of two years. Hudson was acquired from the Toronto Blue Jays. He was, he was pitching at a high level in the AL East. And as we all know, he was extremely valuable for the Nats down the stretch run as they won the World Series. Uh, if you look at the moves they made in their bullpen now, bringing Daniel Hudson back, it's kind of with Will Harris, this could be a Nationals bullpen that to be reckoned with. It, it, you know, Greg, I think over the long haul, what made that bullpen so good when it became that tournament in October, because their starting pitching was so dominant that they didn't overexpose their bullpen. Sean Doolittle had some really rough struggles in June, July, into they August. They shut him down. He had some issues with his knee. And then Daniel Hudson kind of picked up the slack. But I think the key for the Nationals, John, you touched on it, they're starting pitching. They're, they're kind of a throwback to your and I era where they're looking for innings. They're looking for guys that can give them innings and shorten the game. And not so much with the relievers, but to use the relievers as least amount as possible. Yeah, they got a couple guys that are wild cards in that bullpen. If they figure it out, watch out. I think one of them is Mr. Rainey, cool. who throws 170. Mm -hmm. And then they've got a couple other arms that can, they just got to find the plate. And that's the maturation of allowing those guys to figure it out in scenarios where you're not depending so heavily on them. They basically shelved four guys in the postseason. They, they couldn't go to them. Mm -mm. And that was, that was a miraculous World Series when you didn't have your full complement of players that you could go to. To Dan's point, they relied so heavily on their starters, it allowed them to play a seven-man pitching staff and they won the World Series with it. And you can't expect the starting rotation to perform the exact same way in 2020, to carry such an innings load, to, to, to make up, to drag one of the worst bullpens to the postseason. You can't expect it back to back. Well, I don't think. Uh, it, they were one of the worst bullpens in baseball last they year. They were, but when I look at that rotation, they remind me a little bit of the Braves rotation yeah. that you were in because these are guys that are pitching. It's the that, worst bullpen ever. Ever. I know that it's yes. to make the I, I get it. But they do that back to back. They have a starting pitching army to me that they're not just throwers, John. They're guys that can pitch. Steven Strasburg has gone to another level. So has Max Scherzer and Corbin. These guys are pitchers and not throwers, and they're not guys that you can depend on these guys to figure out to get through a game, particularly Strasburg and Scherzer. They could have their B stuff and they could figure out how to get through yeah, seven and, innings. And again, I know we're in a kind of a brainwashed era mm -hmm. where we think like this. And you have to go back some years to make people realize this is a trainable job that you can do this year in and year out. There is no, oh, too heavy of a load and, and the guys are going to break the next year. We have too many years of evidence of people being able to do this. How all of a sudden do people fall off the cliff after they win a championship or pitch 220 innings? It's trainable. Scherzer trains for it. Nobody runs more than he does. Strasburg is an animal when it comes to working out. He knows now. I think it's clicked. World Series it's clicked hangover for him. is a real thing, though, no, John. It might be for winning a World Series because that's hard to do back-to-back, -back, but it shouldn't be for your performance to be able to pitch 200 innings back-to-back. That is a flawed philosophy that we've adopted to try to take care of pitchers. And I've always, you've heard me say this on the show. We do a disservice to pitchers by handcuffing them so much, by babying them so much that the injury rate actually goes up because of that.